Uh, thank you, Professor Chen. It's uh, always an honor to be here in Vancouver, especially the UBC, and such a gorgeous uh, campus. I enjoy the staying here, and the Peter Wall is a very good dorm. <laughs> And I can see the uh, mountain and the snowing and also the uh, beautiful ocean. So it's just a great treasure. And especially, we have a branch office and a lot of volunteers in uh, Vancouver. The second time I visit Vancouver, the first time is uh, 2005, so some 14 years ago. <laughs> you know, time always a fry. And I, I acquainted with the Chen Jinghua professor. It's been years, a decade. As in 2008, we met in Bai Ma Si. That's the first time that the, um, the Cixi branch office in Vancouver sponsored the UBC to organize the um, uh, summer camp for the Buddhist young scholar. It's quite successful. And uh, since the time that the Chen Jinghua professor has been one of the uh, prominent scholars in Buddhist study, and also the good network across over the world. So uh, I'm very honored to be here, and today I'm sharing the, the topic is about the, uh, the Tsuji and, and, and his work, and especially what Tsuji represent the Buddhist uh, movement uh, in, in the modern time. So we know in the past that we are more familiar with the mindfulness meditation to get to the enlightenment, or you know, you know, chanting sutra. But today I'm going to share with you that Sujji is Buddhist, is that through the altruist action, we are able to reach the enlightenment and reach to the uh, awakening. That's the whole concept and the main theme that I'm going to share with you today. So uh, I think the rise of humanistic Buddhism is a really a modern phenomenon and a new religious movement for Buddhism, especially in China and in, also in Taiwan. In the past, we might uh, thinking that the monk and the nun will live in a mountain area to seeking for self-enlightenment. But nowadays, a lot of Buddhists, monk or nun or lay person, they engage in social transformation. And by doing social work, we are able to purify our spirit. Through this kind of altruist actions, we're able to get rid of greed, get rid of desire, and working for all the human and essential beings. So that's the concept through altruism to ultimate enlightenment. That's a new path, new Dharma path that promoted by Chiji uh, Buddhism organization. So Chiji uh, is mean compassion relief. Ci means compassion, and Ji means relief. So actually, it's a, in America, we, we call it Ci Compassion Relief Foundation to so emphasize on action of Buddhism. And the Dharma Master Yen saying that this is a walking sutra. Sutra is the path, and the path is for walk. So we have to walk the sutra, which means we have to actualize all the teachings and principles and Dharma the Buddha gave us. So this is Dharma Master Zheng Yan. She founded the foundation in 1966. And he carried on the four missions, the charity, medicine, education, and culture. We're now working for charity over 100 nations. We have a hospitals island wide in Taiwan. We have a looking for a new hospital in Indonesia. We have a team called Tsuji International Medical Association, accommodate 15,000 physicians and nurses and volunteers over 40 countries. We have an elementary school, high school, as well as university in Taiwan, as well as in Indonesia. And we have a, in a cultural mission. We have a TV station publishing company and the other media to promote the ideal of Buddhist teaching. So the mission is aimed to purify human mind and harmonize the society and make the world free from disasters. That's the three major vows from Dharma Master Zheng Yin. So this is the Jinsu abode. It's the spirit center for the Tsuji Foundation. It's a global spiritual center for all Tsuji members as well. 
So the life of Jin Sir Bo, you know, they at the time the East Coast of Taiwan still very uh, undeveloped. It's very relatively poor. My master chose Huang Lian to be her hometown to build up the uh, abode and also for the foundation. And the master and her monastic disciple support themselves by sewing baby shoes at the very beginning and many different handy jobs to support their lives. So it's no war, no mail. And all the money go to the needy person, go to the foundation, not go to the abode. The financial system of abode and an NGO of Tsuji Foundation actually separated. So all the donation go to foundation, go to the needy person. The master and her disciple do not accept any donation to themselves. They work by themselves, they have a self support system. So that's the, uh, 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 the principle and also build the integrity and trust uh, to the public. This is the, a is the early age that uh, all the master doing the farming job and the different kind of handy job as well to support their own life and they make the candles to sell to the market and raise uh, uh, some fun for their daily life. And they, they are not only uh, working by themselves to support themselves, they also devote to Tsuji Foundation as a volunteer. At the beginning at the Master Zheng Yan to visit all the recipients in, in the Hualien province. So Master Zheng Yan actually is the first volunteer of Tsuji, and as well as his disciple devote to the needy people in the most disadvantaged areas. And by this kind of a model and a paradigm, we found the Master Zheng Yan's volunteerism spirit. So all the volunteers worldwide, when they go to the relief work, they pay by their own traffic fare. They don't get the money from the foundation, they pay their traveling cost. So that's the spirit of Tsuji volunteerism. So you can see the disciple visit those recipients and disadvantaged people. And this is uh, volunteers in Japan at the, uh, at the earthquake of a tsunami uh, in, in, two th in, I think it's a 2010, it's a 311 tsunami. You can see the Katrina in the state, we, we were there. This is African um, Zulu members in South Africa. They, they, are all, they, they were recipient, eventually become a giver, become the volunteers of Tsuji. So this is an altruistic goal, the helping others, we purify our spirit. Through social fulfillment, one can reach self-actualization. It's also an accomplishment of social justice. So it's good for, for yourself, it's good for others. It's also fulfill the social justice and create the social welfare. So this is a three part of accomplishment is actually carry on by Tsuji members. And the core value of Tsuji is selfless giving. This is a teaching from Master Zheng Yan. Give selflessly and also giving with gratitude. By giving with gratitude, you're going to be selfless. You're going, going to be uh, for your fortune not to be a giver, instead to be a recipient. So every time when a volunteer go to the relief war, they bow to the recipient it's because they are so fortunate to be a giver. And they learn from the recipient regarding the teaching of impermanent, the suffering. So they know that life is permanent, so that they all understand well the Buddha's teaching. And this is the typhoon in Taiwan, Morocco, it's very severe. And all the volunteers, about 150,000 volunteers went to the southern part of Taiwan to clean up the water. And within three weeks, we cleaned up the city of Kaohsiung, Pyeongdong, and Taidong. And so, so a lot of people went there. And also Master Zheng Yin visited the Kachaspe site and built the new houses for them. Within three months, they built about 700 houses new permanent houses for the Aboriginal people. And they got all the furniture, all the uh, equipment they have. So they just living, they just moving.
without any carry on any like kind of equipment. And also build a church for them because they are Aboriginal people, they are Christian uh, members. So we build two churches for the villagers. And this is a new village after the Morocco. Only nine months we build, oh no, I'm sorry, three months. It's uh, about 90 days to 100 days we build a new house to them. And this is a med medical mission, a conjoined twin from Philippines back to 2004. Leah and Risha, very cute young girl, but conjoined with the liver and sent to the Huanglian County, Taiwan, to separate the, the liver and successfully separated. Yeah, the cute. Now it's being, now it's being 17 years old. Wow. Yeah. So this is in, the, in, in Czechoslovakia. This is in North Korea. We entered North Korea more than 20 times to do the relief work. This is uh, uh, in Bonn, in uh, Iran. It's a very severe earthquake. Back to 2003, look at the 3,000 ancient city, 3,000 years ancient city, and two minutes later become this. So you can see the impermanent. You, you, you don't know impermanent, the, the meaning of impermanent. When you get into the catastrophe side, you learn the suffering. You know, you learn that everything is impermanent. You learn from them, and you know that the Buddha teaching is correct. And so that 80,000 people pass away. We mobilize ourselves to relieve work. And this is in China, Gansu. I personally engage in this activity as well. You can see that women have to carry the water every day, about four hours, to use in this kind of dirty water. So we build a new uh, water collector, underground collector for them. It costs about uh, only 2,000 renminbi. Yeah, very cheap, very, very effective way. But it can sustain one family. So we build about more than 20,000. Eventually we locate them because some of the area are too dry to build the water collector. This in tsunami in Indonesia is a very severe uh, situation. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people pass away. We, we went there to deliver the food, the material, and conduct a free clinic, as well as build new houses for them. And this is the most we built to them. We built four mosques in the disastrous area. So nowadays we have uh, uh, volunteers over 58 countries and doing the charity work over 100 countries. We have a member about 1.2 million and almost 2 million volunteers worldwide. So this is uh, uh, volunteers in Southern Africa. And this is a, a Christian member, uh, Mrs. Uh, Gladys. Uh, he's from South Africa. You can see that he was a recipient, but now become the volunteer, and then become the commissioner, uh, become the Buddhist Tsuji commissioner. He said, when I was at the bottom, it was Tsuji who sent me. And Zheng Yin has sent us these messages. We are doing God's work. And through Tsuji, we're even closer to our God. So this is cross-religion and cross-culture. And this is in Philippines. Uh, during the Haiyan typhoon back to 2013, it's a very devastating typhoon. In all the Tagaloban city, about 290,000 people suffer in this typhoon. And 90% of the house ruined at the time. So we mobilized the local people to use the bare hand to clean up the city. At the very beginning, they, they don't believe us. We you say, you clean up your own house, we we'll pay you 500 Philippine, uh, you know, yeah, every day, Philippine dollars every day. They, they, at the very beginning, few people believe in that. So maybe only 100 people come over, but eventually uh, 113,000 uh, people each day come to join this kind of uh, uh, cleaning work. So you can see the mass is about uh, 13,000 to 15,000 per day. And within a month, we we'll clean up the whole Tagaloban city. You can see the city like this, and eventually like this. And we also build the church, the Catholic church for them, rebuild. And this is uh, Indonesia in uh, 2002. 
when uh, we saw this uh, dirty river is in uh, Jagada, most dirty river in Jagada. Master saw the video and asked the volunteer in Indonesia to have to clean up the city and rebuild the new houses for them. So we mobilized the volunteers and also our masters and also accompanied with the military soldiers to, to join together to clean up the city. And within three months, we clean up the city. This was the houses they live. And this is after. And this is the first house they had with the key. Okay, we also support the, um, uh, uh, the Muslim school. Uh, this is a uh, elder uh, Habib. He was so a compassionate uh, priest, a Muslim. He organized the school for the orphan, for the poor children, from 500 eventually to uh, 12,000 students, from the high school, elementary school to college. And the government provide him land. We provide the school food, rice, and a free clinic every month. So eventually we become a very good friend, a good, very good partner. Of course, at the very beginning, the Muslim member warned him, if you accept the Buddhist support, you are going to be hell, you know. But eventually they know that they don't give up their own belief. They just, you know, have a, a partners from different religion. And he asked the, uh, Suji volunteered to bestow a master's uh, portrait to him. But we declined that for two years because we believe that we support you with our condition. And he said that we want master's portrait to hand out in my, uh, in my office to, you know, to uh, feel gratitude and become a symbol of the, of the uh, humanity uh, spirit. So we bestow the uh, the portrait to the elder hobby. Eventually, he wanted every classroom have the portrait of Master Zheng Yan, and students can learn from her philanthropy spirit. And also, the student become Tsuji volunteers to join the clean up the um, flooding back to 2008, 2009. I'm sorry. So this is the volunteers from Muslim. So this is a Canadian, this is a main honor that the uh, branch office of Canada, Tsuji, they, uh, you know, invited by the government to participate in the oath of new citizenship. So the Tsuji members in Canada become a good model for new immigrants. So every time that the new citizenship want to vow to join the Canada, Canada and they have to listen to Tsuji's lectures Five minutes, right? Yeah. Probably you can ask that in more detail. Yeah. This is also in Toronto. Also, uh, yeah, it is the, the uh, in new immigration ceremony that should you participate and share our ideal to be a new good citizen of Canada. So, as a Tsuji considered Buddhist Renaissance, the ideas come from one of my friends, Professor Richard Madison in UC San Diego. He wrote a book called uh, Democracy Dharma. He introduced the Tsuji Foundation, uh, Buddha Light and Dharma Drum, and also uh, one of the major uh, Tao temple in Taiwan. In the book, he mentioned Tsuji as considered as a Buddhist Renaissance. At the same year of 2007, when I represent Master Zheng to be told to receive a, a, a Niwano Peace Award. I also submit a paper and a presentation and categorize Suji's movement as a Chinese Buddhist Renaissance. Is this right? Because we, we know that the traditional Buddhism uh, and, uh, is always seeking for self-enlightenment. Giving Dharma is a and enough, you know, in the tradition, no matter it's uh, in the regional uh, India or in the Chinese tradition, we always believe that uh, altruism means giving people Dharma. And uh, material support is a less emphasizes. But such altruism emphasizes on giving material as well as Dharma. 
and try to transform recipient to be a givers. So, but but why Cixi, uh founded in Taiwan? Uh, according to my research, that uh, actually Cixi is combined uh, Confucianism, Buddhism, and the Scientism all together, and the Taiwan is being colonized by the Western country, including Japan, uh, in the last uh, four century, as nearly two century being occupied, colonized by Western country. Uh, is largely influenced by Western culture. Of course, all Taiwanese come from mainland China. The Confucianism, Buddhism has been deeply rooted in Taiwan, become a major part of the culture. So there is a Buddhism, Confucianism, and absorb the Western scientism during the colony. So these three pillars become a, a major cornerstone of Taiwanese culture. So that's the prepare for the organization like Tsuji. So I think the three civilizations merge in Taiwan and also the Master Zheng Yan with his uh, extraordinary wisdom and personality he applied and integrated these three cultures all together and applied to Taiwan as well as to the other nations. So I think the, the, the major uh, cultures of uh, Tsuji, of course fundamentally Buddhism and also Confucianism. Like Tsuji emphasizes uh, one family. We are all fa one family. We are one family and we treat the whole world uh, as a one family. We have to love each other. And the Master always uh, encourage volunteers to do your, your homework first. Take care of your family first and then go to the social work. You don't ignore the family and engage in the social work. So emphasize on family is the core value of Confucianism. And in the ancient time, most Confucians elite criticize Buddhism. One of the criticism is that Buddhism normally neglect the family because you know you become a monk or nun and you leave home. But Suji actually emphasizes the value of home and the family and treat each other as one family. So it is a really com combined with the Confucianism and the Western scientism. We have a hospital, we have a TV station, in our relief world is very organized, very rational, logistic, logistic is very, very uh, efficient, and we're also using uh, a lot of uh, telecommunication to communicate worldwide. So it's also uh, more likely to you know, adopt the Western scientism into the foundation. So that's become the modernity of Buddhist uh, uh, movement. So the it, but the legacy is come from men in China because uh, uh, Tai Chi we know that he emphasized on Buddhism is not 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 for, about death, is about living Buddhism. The Buddhism should provide life wisdom and the well being for all human beings. I think in the early nineteenth century when the China uh, suffer in a different kind of civil war, different kind of uh, Western military force. At the time, they have a big reflection. What can Buddhists do to the country? What can Buddhists do for the people's suffering? So he mentioned that the Buddhism should about the good life, good wisdom, only for death. And he, he believed that uh, a Buddhism about wisdom and world being alive, not only about the dying in peace, although it's also important. So Tai Chi believed that the temple can be manufactured. And he also emphasized that Buddhism should engage in charity, education, and culture. So he believed that temple and the monk and nun should work for themselves. So this idea, I think, adopted by Master Zheng Yan. No meal, no work, no meal. And the, and our boat is, is one of the manufacturers that can pr produce a different kind of product and, and circuit the product and respond to themselves. 
So that's the legacy of Tai Chi. And also, I think, uh, you know, the disciple of Tai Chi, Master Ying Sun, also emphasized that Bodhisattva benefiting others to benefit themselves. So the Bodhisattva benefit others to benefit themselves. And before enlightening ourselves, we devote to enlighten others. This is where a Bodhisattva develop his aspiration. So Bodhisattva are born from great compassion and wisdom and goodness and great wisdom and emptiness are built up by compassion. You only achieve emptiness and wisdom by compassion, which means you must purify others' body, mind, in order to save others. So that's the ideal of altruism, and that's also Master Zheng Yan's belief. Bodhisattva save others first before you saving yourself. It's like a lotus blossom from the murk. The murk is actually nutrition for the purity of lotus. So, so as the Bodhisattva, the troublesome, the suffering of sensual being is the fertilizer to the practice of the Bodhisattva. Through those kind of suffering of sensual being, we learn from them. We nurture our wisdom. We purify our spirit and reach the state of Bodhisattva. So we, we, we are not only contaminated by the people's suffering, we learn from them and nurture from those kind of um, troublesome and contaminations. So, as I just mentioned, the selfless giving is the core concept of Master Zheng Yan and Shi Ji. And that's also related to the fundamental teaching of Buddhist. We so-called independent arising is the core of Buddhism, but the giving corresponding to the ideal of independent arising. And the selfless is an indication of emptiness. You have selfless, so your mind has no occupy by those kind of temptation, desire, and ego. So your mind being purified. So giving is a interdependent arising, and and the selfless, you'll be able to reach the state of emptiness. So actually, these two concept, emptiness and dependent arising, or so called interdependent. I prefer. Interdependent rising because dependent rising is too much dependent, and yeah, and uh, and uh, for the Buddhism mean it's really interdependent rising. Yin yuan sheng fa, yin yuan is interdependent. It's not dependent. So so I think this the giving selflessly actually relate to the core teaching of Buddhism, interdependent rising. So we can give, we selfless, to reach the state of emptiness. And the action principle is giving with gratitude. That makes you selfless. So the Jin Shi Dharma lineage is the Master Zheng Yan's founded and the, the cultivation of calm contemplation and elimination of desire only through diligent dedication to the people. You are not able to reach the calmness unless you you really devote to people, really caring people. You're going to eliminate your desire by doing what? By doing helping others. So the constant and generous dedication lead to the compassionate beholding of all phenomena, matter, and objects. So constant jitters is a very important dedication to, to all human beings and sensual beings. So by doing so, one can comprehend the equality of all sensual beings and the connection of all beings, and thereby attain Buddha, Buddha nature and the wisdom to understand the unity of all the Dharma, because we believe that, that the whole world is one. We are all interconnected. We want to enlighten ourselves, we enlighten others, because others equal to you, others is similar. And interconnected with you. So this is Jin Shi Dharma lineage. And also, 
He believe, she believed that those who aspire to spiritual cultivation can keep on benefiting others and thereby eliminate greed and desire. So Master Zheng Yin founded Jing Shi Dharma Lineage and the ultimate goal is that those who aspire to spiritual cultivation can keep on benefit others and eliminate our greed and desire. So that's the altruistic action and that through this action we can free themselves, ourselves, from the attachment of our own ego until all delusion caused by desire are eliminated. So Master Zheng Yin said, we should think and feel like the Buddha and be integrated in a united with everything in the universe. This state of awakening is the Buddha Yana and to to awakening through altruistic action and meditated wisdom. So uh, Dharma Master and or, on the other hand point out that Dharma exists in all sensual beings and the infinite Dharma can be learned from innumerable sensual beings, just as say lotus and the murk. So in this regard, all sensual beings can conduce to Dharma learning. So this is um, uh, looking closely at the heart of others and learn from them in a mindful manner, can be conductive to spiritual awakening. So Master Jung always say that everyone is a sutra. You learn from their heart. You learn the sutra. Every essential being is a teaching, is a wisdom. You learn from them. You escalate your wisdom you expand your compassion. So you can really enlighten one people, you add up one wisdom. You can enlighten one essential being, you escalate your compassion. So that through helping others, we raise our wisdom as well as compassion. It's not until we have a comprehensive wisdom so that we start to helping people. We have to do the opposite way. We're helping people to escalate our wisdom and compassion. So that's a different kind of logic in compared to traditional Buddhism teaching. So take all essential being as your teachers. Listen to Tsuji volunteer, she said. These are the wisdom that the volunteer had to obtain with a practical first step. So Master say, you should learn from volunteers. And so as herself, she, she said, I learn from my disciples. They are really in practical word. They are really practice Bodhisattva. And she also asked her disciple, you should learn from the volunteer, learn from the lay person. They are doing the Bodhisattva work. So, so he said, she said, I'm grateful for them. I see them not as a disciple or follower, but as a Bodhisattva appearing before my eye to teach me the Dharma. That's why she is humble, but also she presents the philosophy to all her disciples that learn from each other, especially those who practice Bodhisattva in the field work. So Dharma Mechang Yen is based on the Threefold Lotus Sutra. That's the, her fundamental uh, uh, ideal from the Lotus Sutra and also the full immeasurable mind, including the mercy, compassion, bliss, and giving. And also a correct path of the original Agamat ideas. And also, she believed that as the um, Kastagaba Bodhisattva vowed to enlighten all suffering others before enlighten on oneself. The final stage to attain the enlightened insight of permanence, joyfulness, wisdom, and purity of Nirvana. That's also the fundamental teaching of Buddha. So Tsuji Dharma path is a sutra of infinite meaning. That's the fundamental sutra that emphasizes Master Zheng Yin. And the evidence of inner nature and Benevolence for all beings. That's the uh, the fundamental teaching 
or infinite meaning of sutra. And also, I think she followed the uh, Medicine Buddha Sutra, that which all human beings can be physical health, can be abundant materially, and also spiritually rich. So I think Buddhism is not abandoned secular world. Instead, we have to engage in secular world to make everyone physically health and uh, material found uh, abundance, and uh, as well as uh, uh, spiritually uh, purity. So that's the uh, uh, Chiji Dhamma path. And thank you for all. I open up the questions for all of you. Yeah, thank you.